dry season, seven students from Lawrence High School arrive. They will explore parts of the country over a two-week period. These seven will not only discover the magic of Peru, but discover parts of themselves during the journey. I'm Jesse. Uh, my hobby is derby. Uh, we, all we do all day is build cars and then go and crash them. Um, it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in these cars, and all we do is go and crash them. I'm Krista. I'm in the marching band at Lawrence High School, and I enjoy swimming, reading, and science. I'm Sam, and I like to powerlift and fish and hang out with friends. Okay. I'm Andrew. I enjoy soccer and music and sports in general. My name is Spencer, and my hobbies include cross country, hunting, uh, soccer on the weekends with my friends, and just hanging out. I'm Luke, and I'm a finance student at the University of Kansas, and I like to bowl, play football, hang out with my friends, study. are playing the violin, nail art, origami, and food, of course. Right off the plane, impressions were forming for our explorers as they immediately realized they were not in Kansas anymore. They were greeted by the heavy, chaotic traffic of Lima. The traffic, the first night we got there and started driving to the hotel, scared me at first because we instantly drove out into a very busy street going faster than normal. It was hectic. Uh, I thought we were going to get hit like a good five or six times. The traffic in Lima was completely insane. Absolutely nuts. It, it was endless. The rules are there are no rules. The car is there, they just rely on instinct really, they're just like... People used horns to signal if they were turning or changing lanes. Those rules aren't enforced if there are any, and... Because they drive so close, so fast. And it was bumper to bumper going very fast. I thought Kansas City was bad, like big cities, but this is completely different from big cities. I wouldn't trust anyone from America to drive there. It's just... It's crazy. You have to experience firsthand. While in the capital, the Lions visit the Larco Museum. The Larco holds many pieces, including pre Incan artifacts, that have deep cultural significance to the people of Peru. Uh, my favorite thing that I saw in the Larco Museum was the band of string to show um, statistics for native South Americans that lived there. Those were amazing to see. I wish I got a picture of the big one because it was just like, oh, it was, 
it was gorgeous. It was amazing, and to think that they can put so much different, so many different types of information into one thing was like amazing. And it wasn't even words. I mean, all their uh, their artwork was pretty interesting. How they had like four main characters. It was like a panther, a jaguar, snake, condor. I can't remember, but there were four like reoccurring characters in all their artwork, which was pretty interesting. Years ago, foreign archaeologists were digging up and shipping out many of the artifacts of Incan and pre-Incan people. Prominent and wealthy families in Peru decided to collect pieces so their cultural heritage might stay in Peru, rather than being shipped off to foreign countries. Many of these artifacts ended up here at the Larco Museum. The Lions also visited many of the cathedrals built during the colonial period of Peruvian history, including the church and convent of San Francisco. Really, all the churches, the thing that comes first to mind was how much gold and silver was just all over the place. Underneath the church is an extensive crypt built for church members who wanted to be buried closer to God. The catacombs are also believed to be Lima's first Christian cemetery. The Franciscan Monastery in Lima. It was eye-opening. The, the catacombs underneath, and so you saw all the bones of people for centuries that had been buried in the monastery. I've never seen like human bones before, and seeing so many for your first time is kind of like, wow. And it was really neat because they organized nowadays in a way that you saw the majority of the bones and they were very in your face right there. Yeah. And then the one looking down with all the femurs and the skulls in the middle, that's just kind of creepy but really cool. What is unique about this crypt is that all church members, no matter their economic status, had a chance to be buried in these tombs. It was awesome, it was super inclusive as a church. It had very, very many people from the town buried there. And it was also just beautiful, the courtyard, the paintings on the walls. The whole experience was just awesome there. Another church visited was the Cusco Cathedral. Our Lions learned about several stories associated with this church. They had this um, statue, not statue, a crucifix with they call it the Black Jesus on it, and it's because it's made out of leather. The uh, Cusco was having really bad earthquakes, right? And so they started taking everything out of the church so it wouldn't be damaged. And when they took this one particular one out, the earthquake stopped. So then now they are celebrating that one statue. A final church we visited was San Pedro, also known as the Sistine Chapel of the Andes. I thought the Sistine Chapel of the Andes was really cool to see the seven ways to get to hell because it had vivid pictures of decapitation on the walls and ceilings. That was pretty different seeing the church. Before leaving Lima, the Lions visit John F. Kennedy Park in Miraflores. The park is packed with cats as the neighborhood has decided to feed and vaccinate all the feral cats in the area. It was a perfect way to end our stay in Lima. I was crouching down and I was just petting this cat on the grass and this random cat just comes up and climbs in my lap and just sits there. And it was the cutest thing. From Lima, the lions leapt to the city of Cusco. Our travelers notice the difference in altitude as soon as they deplane. The city of Cusco sits at roughly 11,000 feet above sea level. When we left Lima, we took a, our flight was to Cusco. I had some problems with elevation in Peru. And when we stepped off the plane in Cusco, it was, it's hard to describe because your body, it's not natural for you to get that high in elevation that quickly. I just started feeling really lightheaded, like I wasn't getting enough oxygen. So then when the air, the airplane decompressed and you like started breathing the thinner air, the, our, the tour guide told me to sniff vinegar. I honestly had to sit down for a minute in the airport. I was not feeling it. <laughs> that was the longest day I've ever had. But I just, I went up my room and slept and I felt better after that. 
Just above the city of Cusco is the magnificent Incan military complex Sacsayhuaman. Sexy Woman was a very fun experience because not only were we going through or we were like walking around on like ancient ruins, but we had an amazing view from there. The site is still used today for celebrations, the winter solstice and the new year, as well as family get-togethers, jogging, and as a site for a great view of the city. And these giant boulders on the side, and on these boulders, I don't know if it's like just an overtime erosion thing, but they're almost like rock slides that we went down. And they're like 30 feet, and I like kind of fell down mine, and I hit the bottom and like rolled, and I think there might be a little bit of footage of that. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Many mysteries still remain about the site, including how it was constructed. There are as many theories as there are questions. I really enjoyed just seeing like how complex the structures were that they had to walk through. And if it was like a normal day to get to the top of that, it would take like a solid 15 minutes just to walk up. And uh, it's a very different lifestyle from us. In Oyan Taitambo, the students had the chance to walk city streets that were laid out in the time of the Inca. They also visited a traditional Incan-style house and courtyard. For special occasions, the guinea pig, also known as koi, is used for meals and our students had an opportunity to try this delicacy. Uh, when I ate guinea pig in the restaurant in Cusco, the guinea pig was pretty good. One of my favorite experiences in Peru because not many people can say they've eaten guinea pig before. And it was honestly much better than I expected. Like, I ate my portion. I thought it tasted more like chicken, kind of. It tasted a bit like chicken, but the spices they used to flavor it definitely were drawn out. Like, you could tell it ate grains and grass. It just tasted real... Not like dirt, but kind of like grass. Well, a guinea pig tastes like the hay behind me. There's not as much meat as I originally thought because if you think about it, guinea pigs don't have a ton of meat on them. I wouldn't advise eating it. We had our one of our tour guides eat the head of it, which was really funny. He was excited because I guess the head's a delicacy there. If I, w if I went to Cusco again, I would order it again just to do it. We stopped in Oyan Taitambo to see the uh, Incan ruins. We visited a Inca house in a traditional village. The, the way it was set up, it was like it was like a little, really thin street, like two or three people wide. It was just a real little street, and we turned into a courtyard. And adjoined to the courtyard was like four, three or four houses. The house was built in a square format. And we, when we went into the house, they had uh, llama fetuses that they kept in, in the religion. It's like, good luck, or... The dead llama on the wall. And I thought the story behind it was really interesting about how they had to kill them after 15 years of age. They had to kill them, and if they were pregnant, they took the baby out and, like, like dried it or something. It was a very deep symbol to them. It was pretty cool to see how they kept their ancestor skulls on their ledge. And um, they also had the skulls of their grandparents and just like uh, old family members sitting in the windowsill. I don't know how I feel about living with my ancestor's skulls, but it was a very cool tradition. That kind of freaked me out. And um, they had like 40 guinea pigs living in the floor of their house. And they'd live guinea pigs in one of the houses. And the guinea pigs running around so they could eat those for meals, for their special occasion meals. And they had a lot of animals living in there, which I'm, I'm a big animal person, so that was cool to see. It was crazy just to see a whole bunch of, it was, it was like a guinea pig army, just running around <laughs> the floor. 
I learned a lot there about like their culture with the hanging vulture and um, I just thought it was a very neat lifestyle. From here, the lion set out for the city of Puno, again taking a jump in elevation, climbing to roughly 13,000 feet, nearly the altitude of Pikes Peak. Okay, so when we were in Puno, we went through uh, an open air market, which might have been one of the more interesting markets while we were there. The open air market was pretty crazy to see everything being sold right then and there. Vegetables and fruits looked amazing, smelled amazing. And then as soon as you would walk around to the meat, you just see people butchering animals like it was no big deal. And to see them butcher the bulls or cows, goats, right in front of us we saw one bull head sitting on a table, freshly cut up. A lot, of, a lot more, how would I say, conservative with how they do stuff in America. Right. They just don't care down there. I was not great at bartering to begin with, and I'm still not great, but I'm definitely improved. And my very little Spanish that I know came in handy with just like numbers and stuff. And all the stuff's like pretty decent quality. Like all the stuff I bought is still together, and I bought it for very cheap US dollars. Puno is the destination town for Lake Titicaca. Our students had opportunities visit an open-air market, and have unusual taxi service in their preparation for their journey to the lake. Uh, what I thought about the limo ride down to Lake Titicaca was the coolest experience ever because I heard bus, I heard limo, I heard taxi, but nothing really prepared me for like these carts, these man-powered carts like down these hills, weaving in and out through traffic, I thought I was going to die multiple times. After exploring the markets, the lions headed to Lake Titicaca to observe other unique lifestyles found in Peru and to learn more about the people who are living here. Their first encounter on the lake will be at the Floating Islands. The Floating Islands amazed me. Uh, very cool. Very weird to walk around on. It just felt like you were walking around on like a trampoline. When we walked on the floating island, it was really spongy. It's kind of like walking on hay. How soft it was. Like, you couldn't think that that much reed could just hold you and, like, 35 people living on the island we went to. We had to, like, walk on a board across, like, a little river going through the island. Water was just so clear, really. The floating islands were super cool and I didn't realize that they move around. I thought it was really cool how at any point they could just up and move if they wanted to. Like, they can just move them, like if you're mad at your neighbor, you can move your island away from your neighbor. And how they still live on it today, and they have a uh, satellite. And they still have like power and TV or cable and stuff from solar power rings. They had solar panels on the island which just blew my mind, like for their radio or whatever they had in the house. The solar panels to power the satellites and TVs, it's pretty crazy. And I didn't realize how much work it was to upkeep them, because if you're not constantly replacing reeds, it's going to fall apart. They, they said they last for like 25-ish years. The whole lifestyle on there was just very, very different. It was incredible how just they learned how to do that and like learned how to make a lifestyle out of nothing but just the water and the reeds. It's kind of sad though because a lot of the younger people are moving inland and so the culture out there is just slowly declining and probably in, I don't know, 200 years there's, there's going to be a lot more for show and not actual living on them. And we also got to go on a boat ride and that was like really cool because it was like all natural, like there was just like two guys rowing it, I think, and they were strong enough to like row like 10 of us or something. I could not imagine living there. I would like to live there. The kids on the island were really cute. They were like adorable and their outfits were really colorful and interesting to look at. The floating islands were probably one of the coolest things. 
another island on the Peruvian side is Tequile. The islanders have strived to keep the culture and traditions of their ancestors alive. The lake is considered sacred to various Andean people in Peru to this day. Incan beliefs hold that the god Viracucha rose from the lake after a great flood to create the sun, the moon, the stars, and the first humans. Beliefs of some Indians today include that taking a swim in the lake can actually trigger a spiritual rebirth. Uh, when I swam in Lake Titicaca, the, it was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We took a swim and that water was ice cold. <laughs> it was, that was the coldest water I've ever swam in easily. But supposedly, when you go in Lake Titicaca, um, you are supposed to get spiritually cleansed. After we uh, walked back out of the water, me and Luke had to go lay on the hot sand, and like I laid on a rock. <laughs> I felt like a lizard. <laughs> uh, Lake Titicaca was pretty cool. The train ride from Cusco to Machu Picchu was incredible. The views we saw were some of the most breathtaking that I've seen in my life. It was really beautiful. Looking outside the windows. We went through this little valley and it was really foggy. And that was really cool because it was like foggy and there was farms and mountains in the background. And we went from varying climates, like we went through fog, we went through like snow-capped peaks, we went through like almost rainforest, like cloud force, I guess, up there. There are a lot of scenic views that you could see from the train, so it was pretty sweet. The huge mountains, the river that was following us. And at one point we were going up, and we had to do a switch back, so our train was going like this direction, we stop and we have to roll back to get on a new track to keep going up. We passed some uh, school children and they were covering their ears like this because the train was so loud and they were walking right up next to the train. It was very fun and the whole way we were playing cards and I learned how to play hearts and... I learned how to play hearts. It was really, really cool. It's a very fun bonding experience. The final destination is one steeped with mystery, legacy, and beauty. Although never truly lost, this destination was brought to collective awareness of the world after the journeys of Hiram Bingham of Yale University. This place holds a powerful feeling to all those who visit. Behold Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu means many things to many people and is certainly a testament to the engineering and cultural legacy of the Inca. Each of our students left this place moved by its power. Machu Picchu, when we went there, it was just... There really are no words in it describing it Machu Picchu. It's just a place you've seen in pictures and movies and just everything. Like, you could say it's cool, but it's not cool. It's unbelievable. It's... Machu Picchu, easily the most beautiful, life-changing thing I've seen in my life absolutely gorgeous. I could sit on a cliff all day and just look at it. It's so vast. Like, if when you're standing on the edge of the, the buildings and stuff and just like looking over, it it's unreal. It... And wow, look how big it was. It was ginormous. And when you're actually there, it's just breathtaking. It's so beautiful, obviously. It's one of the wonders of the world. Honestly, words can't really describe it. You just gotta see it for yourself. Because just being there, it made me realize how little we are. And it's really almost sad though to like think about the erosion that's going on and the fact that future generations might not be able to go there. So I'm glad, very glad I got that opportunity to go to Machu Picchu. So.
so. And like how. I don't know, it's just. It was an incredible place. I went up to the Sun Gate with Luke, Zach, and a few kids from Pennsylvania went with us. arrived at the top, it was crazy, because you could see all of Machu Picchu, and it looked really little, but standing there, really just, it was almost like an out-of-body experience, because looking at Machu Picchu from a distance, it, it's just something special. Peruvian experience was just in being thrown into a new culture, immersed in a, thrown cult, a different culture for a whole week is just incredible. Um, Peru, it was honestly probably one of the best experiences I could have asked for before going to college. Um, it really made me realize how much I have. I learned from the trip that we use more than we need. It taught me a lot about the value of not having my phone on me and just being in the world around me, getting to know the people better. Like, even today, I don't use my phone as much as I used to because I just want to talk to the people that are around me, the ones who are personally affecting me. It's also been, a, it was a really good cultural experience, just how different their cultures are from us, how quiet they are and reserved compared to Americans, and it just made you think, so. To visiting a new country, and having a language barrier is pretty difficult communicating with people. It taught me a lot about like how important it is to know another language. Like I think I'm going to take Spanish classes now in college. I, they're very difficult, but it's going to affect me in that way because I want to be able to speak Spanish. I want to be able to travel more. I, I would definitely go back. And everybody I went with, I met a lot of people that those few days, and they they're great people. And I will do it again.
Thank you.